now, I mean, with what Cormier's doing and, and, you know, John Jones coming back, you know, the lightweights are all moving up to heavyweight. Do you think, you know, gone are the days of the huge dude who was just a, a, a physical phenom and mm. now the smaller technical dudes? Is, is that, do you well, think? There's, a, there's a thought with the 265 pound weight class and the consensus thought seems to be that somewhere around 240 pounds is the magic number. That's what they okay. think. They think that 240 pounds is the amount of weight that you have where you're strong enough that you can knock out any man, right. but you have more endurance than a man that maybe weighs 265 or okay. heavier and cuts down to 265. Okay. Now, this has not been substantiated. The problem is there, there hasn't been a really super powerful world championship athlete that weighed 265 pounds. There's been Brock mm -hmm. Lesnar, but... Yeah, Brock Lesnar's enhanced, okay. right? You're dealing with a, a guy who tested positive for steroids. He probably has had things. And then, and then this is a new world. Okay. He's also 40 years old now, so it's impossible to tell what he would have been like at 30 mm. if he was clean. And then you have guys like Francis Ngannou, who's 265 pounds, massive knockout artist, natural 265 pounds, but doesn't have the wrestling base, got exposed in his fight with Stipe Miocic. If right. he can't knock you out, he's kind of doomed, and he tired out after the first round. Okay. So the, it's hard to say because there's never been a 265-pound version of Cain Velasquez. Okay. But Cain Velasquez, in my humble opinion, when I look at all of the different heavyweights that I've personally seen fight, Cain stands out as the best. Wow. The reason why Cain stands out as the best is because he has superhuman endurance. Yeah. And his ability to put a pace on guys you would see these guys just wilt mm. under the pressure of him. And I think with Kane, it, you, and this is where it gets really interesting, mm. what did him in is probably what also brought him to the top is his mental toughness because his body started breaking down. Mm. He started having all these back injuries. He needed back surgery, multiple back surgeries, shoulder surgery, knee surgery. Everything was getting fucked up. And I think it was getting fucked up because he was working through pain and because he has the ability to tolerate pain that most people don't have. Right. He's just a fucking animal. Mm. But that's also probably what led to him having this insane endurance mm. is the same kind of mental toughness. I'm sure there's some genetic advantages as well because they would talk about how he would take months off and come back in and still fuck everybody up because he's just that good. But that also could be attributed to the, the cardio base that he had from competing for many, 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 many years at a high level and, and being known for that insane endurance. Mm. And perception to fatigue. Going back yes. to what you said, if you could quantify that, you'd put Kane up there with one of those people who yes. you'd go, he has that in abundance. Yeah. 